Welcome to 3Con Commentary. So let's talk about SmackDown from April the 23rd, 2021. And this show was very good. So let's talk about the Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, uh, Seth Rollins situation. This needs to be discussed. The first segment, which includes the tag team title, tag team match, not tag team title, took 42 minutes. 40. To two minutes. Look, I love everybody involved. I think everybody involved is so talented. But my God, there was no reason why this first, the first 42 minutes featured five performers. There's just no reason for it. It is absolutely abomin. It's an abomination. That was a blight on the show. The show was great. But this was just the beginning. OK, they had 42 minutes. And then they were still the focal point of the show. It's not like they had 42 minutes and then they all vanished and we moved on to something else. It was they had 42 minutes and then they got even more time to do more promos and then got the end of the show. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, <clears throat> I'm all for, you know, stars getting special treatment. But there's no reason. There's no reason for you to dedicate 42 minutes to just a handful of people. And the talk segment, the first segment was it was far too long. And then the second, the tag team match also went too long. And the, set, the tag team match was what? Maybe 10, 15 minutes. The first segment was like 30 minutes, maybe 20, 25 minutes. It was it was too much. Let's talk about it. But it, um, I just wanted to get it off my chest right now. They put too, entirely too much time into this. So Cesaro comes out and, uh, you know, Seth Rollins uh, wants to talk to him, says that he finally reached his potential and that, you know, Seth Rollins gave him the performance of his life and he didn't get a thank you. That Cesaro cannot move on because it's not over until he says so. Then he blames the rain delay for throwing him off and says that, you know, you'll never be able to beat me again. Cesaro said, I'll fight you right now. Which, of course, Seth Rollins was like, nee, I'm not interested. Uh, Jay Uso comes out, says he can't beat Roman. He doesn't even deserve to face Roman. Seth Rollins then, you know, kind of whispers to him that, hey, look, me and you should handle this. We should go in there and stomp a mud hole in him right now. Which, of course, Daniel Bryan comes out. Daniel Bryan says, okay, look, this is not about to happen. You guys are just upset that you, you got, you know, Seth Rollins got embarrassed. And Jay Uso, you're just out here because Roman Reigns told you to come out here. He says that I'm out here to see that Cesaro gets what he deserves, that he has infinite respect for Cesaro because he outworks everybody. He's worked harder than everybody and said he even worked harder than me. Very interesting. So Roman comes out. Roman says that uh, Daniel Bryan doesn't deserve nor Cesaro doesn't deserve to face him. And he talked about his new shirt, the smash them, stack them shirt. And he pointed to Daniel Bryan at the bottom of the shirt and said, that's you. You're the bottom. Which, of course, has a double meaning that he literally was the bottom. He also called him a, the F word. <laughs> well, you know what they call the bottom in certain relationships. Um, so Cesaro, um, he says Cesaro not talking for himself proves that he's a loser. Then he says they're both main event losers and says that Daniel Bryan is a WrestleMania main event loser. And uh, they suggested, OK, you know, that was all fine. Uh I'm going to take this in bits and pieces. Uh, Cesaro. Cesaro is comfortable on the mic, but he's being, again, outshined by Daniel Bryan. I, I'm i not sure what why Daniel Bryan is outshining Cesaro or why he's talking on Cesaro's behalf, why we can't have Cesaro talk for himself. But I guess uh, it's all leading up to next week, right? So uh, we have Daniel Bryan essentially trying to lift Cesaro up like uh, like Simba from The Lion King. <laughs> and in doing so, he talks about how hard he works. Now, to be consistent, I have to admit, that's, the, that's not really the right thing to do. To talk about how hard somebody works, he works so hard. And he gets so little done. It's almost like, yeah, we, we get it. He's a work rate king. That's not really what we should be. That's not uh, an attraction, Okay. 
We should be doing something that makes him feel like an attraction. Makes him feel like a bigger star that he's been overlooked. Like this guy got all the tools in the world. He's just been overlooked. But I keep saying, well, he's a he's a workhorse. It's like, you know, he's a man. Such a man. Give him a hard hat and a flannel shirt. Okay, he works hard. He, he go dig ditches and do construction. We need stars here, right? We need Cesaro to bloom, to come out of his zone. Instead, we're getting Daniel Bryan talking on his behalf, and I get what Daniel Bryan is trying to do. Um, I appreciate it, but no, no, we don't need no more Daniel Bryan. So then we come back from commercial, um, and these guys are fighting, right? The four guys are fighting, Seth Rollins, Jey Uso, Daniel Bryan, and Cesaro. So Daniel Bryan and Cesaro win because Seth Rollins left Jey Uso behind. So after the match, um, Daniel Bryan gets on the mic again, to which he demands that Roman comes out and that Roman fights him. Roman, well, Roman fights Cesaro, or at least answers Cesaro's challenge, to which Cesaro swung Jey around in a circle for 12, 12 times. Then Daniel Bryan said that Roman is scared and that, you know, obviously he's scared of you. He's not going to come out here. Let's let's mock his, you know, he mocked his family man status. And say, oh, he's not even come come out here and help his family. So Cesaro swings Jey Uso again, and then says Daniel Daniel Bryan says that Roman needs his help, or no Roman needs help to beat anybody. He needs my help to beat Edge. He needs Edge help to beat me. You know, he needs somebody's help to beat Cesaro. He can't beat anybody on his own, and says that if they have the match, you know, one on one. He believes Cesaro will win the United, the Universal Title. All good, all good stuff, except it's the wrong person talking. Like that's the that's the one issue here is that Cesaro could have said all this stuff, you know, it's the wrong guy talking, you know. Unless Daniel Bryan is going to be like, if Daniel Bryan is going to go to let's say be the Gulak of this situation, now this is how you can make it make sense. Like there was a time when they were doing uh, Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak and they were saying, that, oh, uh, Gulak was Bryan's coach. If that's going to be the storyline where Daniel Bryan is going to be Cesaro's coach, this would be fine. Right. Um, and I would be 100 percent with it. But if as long as they are, I don't know, tag partners, buddies, then it just seems like Daniel Bryan is trying to trying to help Cesaro along and that Cesaro can't do it himself. If this is going to be the case, then Daniel Bryan needs to be taken out of the ring and put into Cesaro's corner officially as his manager and or something like that. You know, his training coach or something like that. That would be sweet, you know, but um, right now it just makes it seem like all he does is, you know, he's talking on his behalf, which is not cool. So then uh, Daniel Bryan goes over to Adam Pierce and he says, Adam, he told Adam Pierce, look. You need to make the match between Roman and Cesaro. And then Adam Pearce says, like, oh, you know, it's not that easy. It's like, what, what do you mean it's not that easy? You know, now they are continuing the storyline where Roman gets what Roman wants and Roman has a way of getting out of things. But you really should never uh, have your, um, your, your leadership, your power structure basically saying, oh, there's nothing we can do. We can't force this match to happen, even though we can force every other match to happen. That, that doesn't make any sense. So later, um, uh, uh, Heyman basically says that, you know, is, is, uh, Roman going to accept the challenge? Then he starts talking about how much he loves Cesaro, that Cesaro is his favorite Cesaro of all the Cesaros on the planet. Cesaro is his favorite Cesaro. And then he said, he gave us a spoiler that Roman will be given his, his, um, his response tonight. Uh, one of my, uh, subscribers mentioned that they should talk more about, Heyman's relationship with Cesaro. And I 100% agree. And I think that we're probably... Now, this is a very interesting story because we've not lost... Uh, we're not deep enough into the story yet, but we probably should be mentioning that by now. Now, last week, um, you had Paul Heyman basically shitting on Cesaro, saying that he's not worthy, he's not worth it, he's a nobody, he's this, he's that. And this week he's like, oh no, this Cesaro is my favorite Cesaro. So of course he's talking out of both sides of his face. Now maybe next week we'll talk about, you know, and I think this is better, is 
I'm going to get my predictions for the match later. But I think ultimately one of the things that would be really cool is if Heyman says, look, I know Cesaro. I trained Cesaro, you know, smudge it a little bit. I trained him. He was a Paul Heyman guy. I know Cesaro inside it. I know his weaknesses. So no, we're not scared of Cesaro. We're well prepared for him. And then, you know, but WWE does not believe that people have long-term memory. You know, they think people have the memory of squirrels. Like, you know, you planted this nut and then you forgot where it was, you know, three weeks later. It's like, no, you know, you have the network for Christ's sake. You want people to, to buy into the past and to look into the past. Go back in history and show us Cesaro and Heyman being together. You know, that's that's really what we should be looking at. So to close the show, um, Daniel Bryan and Cesaro are in the ring again. Uh, Roman comes out. Roman questions that is, you know, is, you know, Cesaro, you know, who do you think he is? He doesn't deserve to be in the ring with him. He, he's nobody. He's nothing. And he says that his answer is no. His answer will always be no, because the champion is the one who makes the challenges around here. Obviously, he's asserting himself. Then he challenged Daniel Bryan to a match. And he says, you, me, one on one, one more time for this the United the Universal title. But if I win, when I win, I don't want to see you again. I don't want to see you around here anymore. And Daniel Bryan looks like he really didn't want to do it. And Cesaro was like, look, you got to do it. You got to take the opportunity. Take the chance. You got to do it. And so Daniel Bryan accepted. And so next week will be universal title versus, I'm guessing, it's going to be title versus career. I guess you could put it like that. Even though that might not be the, the best way to put it. And that's not how they... uh they chose to uh, show the graphic. They didn't show title versus career. But if Daniel Bryan loses, he has to go away. And this is basically going to be their way of writing him off TV, which explains why he was doing so much talking and why he's been, you know, the focal point of a storyline featuring Cesaro. So, all right, um, the match next week. Clearly, Roman Reigns is going to win. Is he going to win because Jay Uso is going to interfere or because Edge is going to interfere? I think that would probably be the the best option is to have Edge uh, get get rid of Daniel Bryan. And then maybe you do Daniel Bryan versus Edge at WrestleMania Backlash. And then that's how you write Daniel Bryan off. I think you have to have Edge versus Daniel Bryan. At some point, you have to have that match. And I think that Edge being being gone for two weeks and then making a surprise return to screw Daniel Bryan out of this match and to get him kicked out and to say that this is basically revenge for uh, you, you know, bulldozing your way into my WrestleMania match is good storytelling. And I think that's a good way to get to that match. And then you have Edge win that match and you write Daniel Bryan off TV. So at that point, I do believe that, you know, once Daniel Bryan is gone, we're still going to take our time with the Cesaro thing because Cesaro has still not wrestled Jey Uso to a convincing finish. So I think that maybe that's the match they're going to build up to is they're going to have him fight Jey Uso in some type of special match, maybe a no disqualification match or something like that, um, where if he wins, he gets a title shot. And I think that's the best way to do it because Cesaro, and I think he still has some unfinished business with Seth Rollins and maybe... You run that back for WrestleMania Backlash. You run it back, Rollins, Cesaro, number one contenders, or something like that. Um, WrestleMania Backlash is in three weeks. So that's a that's a tough situation because um, <laughs> and that's a lot of time. And Roman's not going to wrestle on TV that much. He's going to wrestle next week. But I don't know um, how you can continue the Cesaro-Roman story without having that match at WrestleMania Backlash. I think you have to have that match. You know, um, of course, I, Roman's going to win the match, but I think you have to have it. Um, so I loved all of this. I just think it was too long. You know, they just got too much time. Uh, they're trying to find some way to get rid of Daniel Bryan in this situation. Um, this is the most TV time Daniel Bryan has gotten in years. It's very, it's very bizarre that at a time where Daniel Bryan kind of doesn't want to be the the focal point of the show that he's become the focal point of the show. And back when he wanted to be the focal point of the show, they didn't want him to be the focal point of the show. They were trying to do anything except put the belt on Daniel Bryan. Now they're teasing it again and again and again, <laughs> you know, 
But um, it being on TV now, almost guarantees that Roman will win. Um, it's almost also a way to to end, put a definitive end to the Roman Daniel Bryan story by having Roman get rid of him. Um, that's good. You know, that's there needs to be some finality to it. And I think that helps. Um, then you can just bring Edge back in. Um, I don't know how you would uh, bring Edge back into the story without, you know, dis- dislodging Cesaro from the story. Maybe you have Edge and Cesaro. Maybe that's something that you do. That could be fun, too. You know, I, I will, I'm down for that. But I don't think Edge is going to be gone for much longer. I do believe Edge is going to come back. And, of course, there's also, if it's not Edge, probably be Jay Uso, who's, who's also going to be there and be involved. But I can see this situation, this big match on SmackDown where Cesaro is going to be in Daniel Bryan's corner to counteract Jay Uso being in, to interfering. And I think from that position, you then have a third party or a fifth party who is not who is not usually involved get involved, and then that's going to be Edge. So that's my idea. Um, I I enjoyed the story. Um, I just think it was a little bit repetitive and it ate up too much time. That's it. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, ha- use the hashtag three con commentaries to support the channel. Um, uh, like. Share, subscribe, subscribe via subscribe star, send cash via the cash app, follow me on Twitter, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.